Microsoft wants you to panic and run out and go buy a new PC because they're ending support for Windows 10, October 14th, 2025. But I'm here to tell you what end of support really means. Microsoft will stop publishing security updates for anybody who is not currently enrolled in the extended security updates program. More on that later. This means that if there are any zero day exploits or security vulnerabilities found, your PC will be more susceptible to those issues, unless they are patched. Now, this doesn't mean immediate breakage or anything of your PC or that you're just not gonna be able to turn it on one day. It just simply means that there will be an increased risk of problems if these issues are not addressed. End of support also means that there will be no more technical updates or program feature updates within the Windows 10 operating system for the rest of its lifespan. And this is nothing of concern. Now, when it comes to the extended security updates or ESU for short, there's a handful of ways to get them. But in short, it's been found out that Microsoft is gonna offer free extended security updates to any single Windows 10 user. That's a win. I've offered a full video tutorial that's gonna be linked in the description below, and maybe a card up here as well, so you can know exactly the process to get extended security updates for free for your system for the first year. Let's talk about the real risks though and why running an outdated operating system can be a problem. Most infections and problems actually come from found and exposed security vulnerabilities on every single device that is connected to the internet in some way. Nothing is fully secured from this. You hear about exploits happening and being found every single day from things that are small, something on a device that you might have, your iPhone, Android, or something like that, to sometimes big bank security networks that have these vulnerabilities. It's just absolutely everywhere and there's no perfectly fine way to be fully protected from all of it. And behind the scenes, silently, Microsoft is always releasing updates for all of their operating systems that we're currently in support. So you just be using your computer, you update it once a week or something like that, you restart once a week, you have these security updates that are coming into the system regularly that help protect you from those vulnerabilities that were found throughout the operating system's lifespan. So there's like one or two sort of problems that are very specific in nature, you're probably not gonna have any issues, but if you're running your system for years and you don't have any of these patches or updates, and there's like 30,000 different vulnerabilities that are found, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. And believe it or not, Windows XP and Windows 7 systems still function to this day, and they both lost support several years ago. Windows XP in 2014 and Windows 7 in 2020. And it really shows that the only harm is the fear mongering that goes on to tell you that your PC is no longer protected, and therefore it's not gonna work, it's gonna burst into flames, whatever it may be. As I mentioned before though, one of the biggest risks of running an operating system without support and protection is gonna be that your software programs will eventually stop working or will stop allowing updates. Main notable programs are gonna be things like Google Chrome, Adobe Photoshop and Premiere, Intuit with TurboTax and Quicken and QuickBooks and those sort of programs that are all more like live service programs, sometimes Microsoft Office as well. But if you're running an older system with older software that doesn't do those updates, it's not gonna break because there's nothing to break. While using these systems in a day-to-day -day nature really isn't effective anymore because of a lot of the programs that no longer work, you can still use Windows XP and Windows 7 systems just fine, especially if they're not even connected to the internet. Unless you have an old XP legacy box that has all this awesome retro software on it and you wanna keep running, do that. A lot of people have purchased a lot of programs that only run on Windows XP and they can't upgrade. But as long as they don't connect it to the internet or need to use it on the internet, they're really not at any more risk. They're just using the system. And sure, it can't maybe necessarily browse everything and check their email like they want to, but a lot of times I don't think your only computer is gonna be Windows XP or Windows 7. And as I mentioned in the past, I was running Windows 7 for three years after support ended. So I've only been running Windows 10 for about two years now, which is gonna make it the shortest life cycle of any system I've had. And I was forced to upgrade when TurboTax did not want to install on Windows 10, which was right on, I think the 2023 life cycle for the TurboTax. So that forced me to upgrade. And now all my systems are running Windows 10, but it's not gonna be that easy to get me to upgrade all of my systems to Windows 11. I've seen tons of users comment about wanting to use the LTSE version of Windows 10, but that doesn't still protect you from the main reason why security updates ending for Microsoft is the worst situation. It's because a lot of these program manufacturers, like I mentioned in point number two, will choose that you can no longer use them on that version of Windows 10, no matter if they have support from Microsoft or not. Plus, if those operating systems, like the IoT version, are more locked down because of the business sort of deal that they're supposed to be made with, you're not gonna be able to necessarily run those software programs anyway. It's very niche use case scenario for those types of versions of the Windows operating system. And you may be asking yourself, self, well, what is the Don's new plan now that some of this stuff has changed a little bit? And it's not really all that much. My main preferred option, as notated in this video here, was gonna be, I was gonna just do option one, which was do nothing. But now I'm gonna be doing option one, which is nothing, 
but with a little bit of something. After discovering an easy way to get the Microsoft Extended Security Updates for free for the first year, that's going to be my main option because I know that I can get those security updates and I'm not going to have to worry about anything for the first year easily. Microsoft may still extend the next two years of the Extended Security Updates for free for the same methodology or not. We won't know anything, same with Microsoft not knowing anything, until we get to that point. So in conclusion, I don't think we're going to have anything to worry about for the next three years with Windows 10. I think that all of this fear-mongering is just going to be something to get you to buy a new PC and help you move to a new PC. But at the end of the day, if what you're running works and works well and you're protected, you won't have any of these problems. I definitely recommend getting the extended security updates so for the first year, and more so if you can, especially if they're going to be free. Because free updates essentially means that the end of life isn't even really end of life. They're just kind of moving over to this new thing to try to sunset it. And they did offer the extended security updates for Windows 7 and possibly Windows XP. And that's why Windows 7 still worked for me for three years because they offered three years of support after the end of date expiration. I just didn't even really know about that. That's boring. You're boring, everybody. Quit boring everyone! Anyway, so take it from me. The real risk and what it really means when Microsoft ends support for their operating system is not as big of a deal as everybody seems to think that it will be. Nothing's going to explode, nothing's going to stop working, and especially with Microsoft offering free security updates for the first year, the date doesn't even matter. It's not even a talking point that Microsoft is going to end support for it on this day, except that it's going to lose technical support and feature updates, which again, we haven't had any new feature updates since they forced Copilot onto us. So besides that, it's actually going to make it a better, more well-run, well-rounded operating system because you're just getting security updates. We don't need new features. It works just fine. Windows 7 works just fine. We don't need no features. But as I mentioned, it's a no-brainer action to get the Microsoft Windows 10 Extended Security Updates for free, and I've got the full tutorial on how you can do that the easy way without having to risk any of your data going to Microsoft that you don't want them to have. It's super simple. I've already tested it out, and I've had zero problems with it, so check the link in the description down below to see that video. Give this video a like if you found it helpful. Feel free to subscribe to get more information like this as well. I'm doing everything I can to give you the most proper information without any fear-mongering about what Windows 10 means and what you actually need to do about it. So just as a brief recap, I've been in the technical repair field for almost 20 years, and I have seen this song and dance several, several times. And I'm here to tell you that it's not a problem. Just follow what the Don says, because remember, the Don's got your back. That was so good until it wasn't.